All right, this first video, um, refer to your handout. This is problem set number one. And you're given a table here, and we've got a data set for f of x, g of x, h of x, and k of x. So let's examine each one, and we want to figure out if we've got linear or exponential, and we want to figure out if we have increasing or decreasing or growth or decay. So let's first start with f of x. So we're going to look at this data set right here. And when I look at the data set, let's just examine it and see if we can see a pattern. Well, when I go from 0.25 to 0.5, I'm increasing. And then when I go from 0.5 to 0.75, I'm increasing. And then increasing to 1, and then 1 and a quarter. So when you examine this, let's just write some notes over here. When you examine it, it looks like you're adding point two five each time. So if you are adding each time, that means this is linear. I guess we'll write it down here. Linear. And it's increasing because the values are getting larger, so that's increasing. So now we need to come up with a function. Linear is y equals mx plus b. Um, and the slope you could figure out by taking y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, and I'll leave that to you to do. But when you do that, you get 0.25 is the slope, and then we are increasing each time by another 0.25. And where x is 0, remember, that's also your y-intercept. So f of x is linear and in increasing. All right, now let's look at g of x. So let's first rule out whether it's linear or not. So I can go from 3 to 6, so that's increasing, by adding 3. So if I add 3, I get 6. But if I add 3 to 6, I don't get 12. And if I add another 3, I certainly don't get 24. So this is not linear. So therefore, it must be exponential. But let's see if we can examine the exponential and how it grows. So 3. If when I go from 3 to 6, it looks like I'm doubling. And when I go from 6 to 12, well, that's another double. And 12 to 24 is another double. So it looks like this is doubling. So recall that the form for exponential looks like that, where a is your starting value or your y-intercept, b is your growth or decay. So in this case, the b is going to be 2 because it's doubling. And then the a, well, the way to figure that out is you put your 2 in because you know that. And then you could pick one of these values. And let's pick the value right here when x is 0. So I'm going to put in 0. And that's going to equal 3. See how I put an x and y in there? Anything to the 0 power is 1, so that tells me that a now is 3. And I could just read it right from the chart. If x is 0, then y is 3, though that means that a is 3. So we said this was exponential. It's doubling, so then it's growth. OK, let's look at the next one, um, h of x. All right, so it's definitely increasing. And it looks like, let's see, I, I, I can go from 7 to 7.7 by adding 0.7. But if I add another 0.7, well, that doesn't give me 8.49. So it's not linear. So it's got to be exponential. But I certainly can't look at this and see um, what it's growing by. So let me tell you how to do this. So you take the second value. Here, we're going to rate this in blue here. Second value and you divide by the first. And then that should equal also the third value divided by the second value. And it's also the same as the fourth value divided by the third value. You can do that in your calculator. And if you do that, I think you're going to find it's 1.1. So 7 times 1.1 gives me 7.7 .7, times 1.1 gives me 8.47, and so on. So therefore, the b is 1.1, and it's definitely growth. 
and I know my a value because the a value exists where the x is 0. So that's going to be 7. And now let's do k of x. So k of x definitely is not increasing, so that must be decreasing somehow. So to go from 2 to 1.6, well, I could subtract 0.4. But then if I take 1.6 and subtract 0.4, that does not give me 1.28. So it's definitely not linear. So let's make a little bit of room here. And then let's calculate that out to see what that one is. Okay. So we're going to take 1.6 and we're going to divide by 2. That's the same as taking 1.28 divide by 1.6 the same as 1.024 divided by 1.28 and the last one is the same and if you do that you'll find you get 0.8 so I know my B value is 0.8 and the A value is 2 so we know this is exponential oops I forgot to write exponential in this other one exponential there we go so we know this is exponential but it's decay because it's decreasing. Okay, so let me um, let's do number two then on the handout. So we're going to examine the difference between growth and decay. So first of all, when I look at the function, um, this one on the left represents growth, and this one on the right represents decay. Okay, and then my a value. Well, the a value is always the y-intercept. Let's write that over here. So it's the y-intercept. So it also occurs, you could put down also, when x equals 0. So if you had your function y equals a times b to the x, if x was 0, Let's just put that in a minute. Anything to the 0 power is 1, and then you get your a value, which is your y-intercept. And then let's examine the b value. So when I have growth, then I'm going to have a b value that's greater than 1. When I have decay, I have a b value that's between 0 and 1. And something I want to point out to you is your textbook uses this form right here. f of x equals capital C times a to the x. And this can be really super confusing because you were probably used to this form from a previous course and your graphing calculator. And I tend to use this one quite a bit. Um, again, your textbook uses this capital C times small a to the x. So just, just note that. All right, this is the end of the first lesson.